I'm not going to come out here and be all weird and strange and treat Raw and SmackDown like they're not one company, but I will say that it's pretty damn sad. Survivor Series is in like three and a half weeks, and SmackDown built Survivor Series more tonight than Raw built the pay-per-view that's happening this weekend. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spies Phoenix, the YWC Reality Tech, here with the October 25th SmackDown Live review. Decent show. It's kind of cool to see them have a bit of time to breathe, because they've had a lot of time to go between Backlash and Survivor Series. Raw doesn't have the same... Uh the same convenience, but we start the show off tonight with all the, with a recap of all the bullshit between uh, Ellsworth and Ambrose and Styles, and Ambrose using Ellsworth to fuck with Styles. Finally, Am uh, Styles loses his shit, goes to Daniel Bryan last week and demands a match with Dean Ambrose tonight. Daniel Bryan adds the caveat of, okay, if D Dean Ambrose beats you tonight, then he gets another shot at your title somewhere along the way, presumably at Survivor Series, and then we go to the first match, which is Bray Wyatt versus Kane in a no disqualification match, which in and of itself is not a match that's very exciting because it's Kane, but I mean it pushes forward the Bray Wyatt versus Orton thing, which we're hoping is going to go somewhere, and I'm still holding on to a little glimmer of hope that the tease we got last week of the casket is going to lead to an Orton versus Wyatt casket match, but we will see where that goes when it goes. Uh, but as I say, Bray Wyatt versus Kane in an ODQ match tonight. Luke Harper, conspicuous by his absence, as is Randy Orton. They trade punches to start a clothesline by Kane in a dropkick. Kane, at his age, doing the dropkick, not the greatest thing in the world, but it is what it is. Kane works the knee with a clothesline and another takedown. Uppercut by Kane, corner splash and a side slam. They brawl outside, and Wyatt eats the steps. Wyatt is down, we get the first jump scare of the evening. Luke Harper appears, hits with a discus clothesline, and we go to commercial break. Coming back, we got both guys back in the ring. Wyatt rides a headlock and a jawbreaker by Kane. Clothesline by Wyatt and back to the headlock once again. Working the neck, I guess the sister Abigail attacks the neck, so the psychology isn't totally off point, but headlocks are as about as exciting as they are. Um, corner splash by Wyatt, boot by Kane, DDT, top rope clothesline by Kane, boot by... Sorry, a boot to Wyatt and to Harper. Urinagi by Wyatt and a crossbody, and you think he's going to go for the sister Abigail, but we get a run in by Orton, who first of all backs Harper out of the ring. Fair enough. You think we're going to get a two on one on Wyatt. RKO on Kane gives Wyatt a dirty look and leaves. Wyatt gets the win, gets left in the ring looking very confused, and they get to play up the whole. You know, who's playing the worst mind game? Is Randy Orton playing a mind game on Bray Wyatt or vice versa? Wyatt left to wonder why did he why did he do that type thing. Backstage, we get an interview with AJ Styles, who bashes James Ellsworth and all the bullshit that he's been through over the past two weeks and says that he's going to beat Dean Ambrose tonight. And it is what is, you know, Dean Ambrose brought this all on himself. We have an interview, or we're supposed to have an interview, with Renee Young interviewing Becky Lynch, but Alexa Bliss comes down to the ring, cuts them off, mocks Becky Lynch for making backlash, mocks her injury, calls her a coward, calls her a con artist, you know, you're not really injured, you don't have anybody fooled, you just suddenly became injured when I became the number one contender. They, they do a little bit of bickering, and it is what it is. Um, Becky Lynch is... As much as I'm a fan of Becky Lynch, she's not as good on the mic as Alexa Bliss, and it was glaring in this segment. But they plugged the match for SmackDown in two weeks in Scotland. Then there's a beatdown by Alexa Bliss, who basically rams her spine first into everything she can find. The desk, the guardrail, the, the ring post, etc. Drags her back into the ring and goes a little bit old school with the spray paint, spray painting the yellow streak down Alexa, sorry, down Becky Lynch's back. Um... Next up, we have a tag team match. It's the Ascension versus the Hype Bros. Not much to the match, but they do throw in on commentary that this is a qualifying match to be on SmackDown's tag team Survivor Series. Like, five tag teams from Raw versus five tag teams from SmackDown. Slater and Rhino are automatically in because they're the champions. This is the first qualifying match to join them. Um... Not much to say about the match. Honestly, Ascension has a sort of cringy backstage promo. Hype Rider gets the win for the Hype Bros. Now, I will say, and I will say that it's a bit obvious that the Hype Bros were going to win this because SmackDown going into Survivor Series are going to be the babyface team. They're captained by Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon, whereas Raw is, ta uh, is captained sorry, by Stephanie McMahon and a very, very whipped Mick Foley. So... 
and you see Stephanie talking on her team, on her male singles team anyway, uh, the first people she's picked out are Jericho and Owens. So you've got the whole SmackDown are the baby faces, Raw are the heels thing, you know, set out right from the get. Natalia in the back with Daniel Bryan t trying once again to become the captain of the Team SmackDown female team for Survivor Series. And Daniel Bryan says, cool, you've got a match tonight. You've got a match with Nikki Bella. The winner becomes the captain of the team. The loser isn't even on the team. To which I pray that Natalia loses because she's just being a goofball. I mean, it's not Naomi, but it's pretty damn close. Natalia versus Nikki for the captainship. Um, Mauro Ronaldo on commentary overusing the word captainship throughout the entire match. Could have done without that. Collar and elbow tie up and Nikki works the arm and then she trips her. Flying forearm by Nikki and a back body drop. Clothesline by Natty and a double clothesline back on the inside. Abdominal stretch by Natty and a boot and a takedown. Surfboard stretch by Natty and a Thez press by Nikki. Natty rides a headlock and then she hits her with a takedown and a sharpshooter attempt. Vertical suplex by Natty. Face buster by Nikki. Insiguri by Nikki. Michinoku driver by Natty. Natalia tries to go for the sharpshooter one more time. Rolls through into an STF but an STF with a grip by Nikki Bella gets the win. She's going to be the captain of Team SmackDown. Natalia is not going to be in the match at all. Carmella comes out, keeping their feud uh, fresh in the mind, attacks Nikki Bella after the match, hits her with the X Factor, which the commentators call the Bella Buster, which is a little bit lame. But two things on the plate now for Nikki Bella. She's got to captain this team going into Survivor Series, and she's got to worry about this feud um, with Carmella. Obviously, we're going to throw Carmella on that team at some point. Oh my god, can the rivals get along? That sort of thing. But you've got Nikki as the captain of this team. You've got this feud between Nikki and Carmella, and you've got a feud between, um, between Becky Lynch and Alexa Bliss for the actual women's championship, showing you that you can actually properly build stories, and Raw can take a note out of that. Miz comes out with Maurice and the Spirit Squad, and I will say, as much as I like SmackDown, this whole Spirit Squad thing is a big miss. Uh, talks about 16 days of dark times since Dolph Ziggler's been the Intercontinental Champion. Um, Ziggler is an insult to all the legends that held it. He's an insult to me, he's an insult to this audience, but most importantly, he's an insult to Pat Patterson, who's crying up in Canada because Ziggler has the Intercontinental Championship. Ziggler comes out short, sweet, and to the point. He says, you don't have to talk all this shit. If you want a rematch, let's go right now. Miz backs out, but uh, if you want to fight, I'm sure the three of us can give you a fight. The tag team champions, Slater and Rhino, come out and say, cool, let's have a fight. Miz says he doesn't want to fight. He's not going to fight Ziggler. He fights on his own time, roddy, roddy, rah. But why don't you give the Spirit Squad a tag team title shot, seeing as they pinned you last week? So Slater and Rhino dispose of the Spirit Squad in no short order, throwing one of them at Miz on commentary in the process. The match wasn't anything to write home about. Obviously, they weren't going to take the belts off Slater and Rhino to put them on the Spirit Squad. Uh, Slater and Rhino being the co-captains of Team SmackDown's tag team team going into Survivor Series. Gotta look strong, and they do. Here is where I back up everything I said at the beginning of this video, where Raw is just absolutely bowing down and kissing the ass of SmackDown. We throw to the network panel in the in the in the preview panel gimmick there. They go over the matches for the Raw pay-per-view this Sunday. They throw in one last-ditch effort to plug Hell in the Cell, and they, on SmackDown, announce Raw's main event for Survivor Series, uh, finally confirming Goldberg versus Lesnar. Because, you know, it's a Raw match. Why would they want to announce that on Raw? Uh, <laughs> it's just really sad. They're back there. They're back in the backstage area where they do the... Uh, the SmackDown pre-show and all that. They got all the, the SmackDown logos and gimmicks up and all that sort of thing. And even SmackDown, even their pre-show, has to help Raw along. It's it's really sad. And you saw the promo, or the lack of promo from Paul Heyman on Monday. Why couldn't they, if he was so pissed off at the crowd, why couldn't he have just said, fuck it, Lesnar's gonna fight you a Survivor Series. I'm out of here. But he doesn't do anything. They have to edge it in on the SmackDown show, and that's just really sad. What else is sad is the main event, Styles versus Ambrose. Now, all night, James Ellsworth has been following around Dean Ambrose like a little puppy dog, thanking him for all his help over the past few weeks. Uh, you know, I really want to make it up to you. I really want to be there in the corner for you in case you need help. Uh, it's kind of funny. Dean Ambrose is really sitting there trying not to be like, hey, you're a loser. Why do I need you in my corner type thing? 
But eventually he gives in. Eventually he lets Ellsworth come down to the corner. And he just says, you know, you can come down and be in my corner, but stay out of trouble sort of thing. Uh, but, the, but the match starts off. The, we're, we're reminded of the, of the stipulation that uh, if Ambrose wins, he gets a shot at Styles sometime in the future. Uh, but we start off with a mud hole stomp by Ambrose, a back elbow, a corner spear, and a ten punch. Boot by Styles. Ambrose tosses out Styles. Styles detours and goes and beats up Ellsworth. Because, you know, when your title is potentially on the line at a later date based on this match, you want to go beat up a jobber outside. Springboard forearm by Styles to the outside as we go to commercial break. Headlock by Styles as we come back. A drop kick and a suicide dive by Ambrose. Rolling clotheslines by Ambrose and a fisherman suplex. Armbar by Ambrose and he turns it into a cloverleaf, which is kind of surprising coming from Ambrose because you don't really picture him as being a technical guy but whatever snap suplex on the edge of the apron by Styles sends us into the second commercial break it's a little botchy because they've got that little bit of space to deal with but the fact that it's botchy almost makes it look worse so I guess they can go along with it uh, the fact that Ambrose plays up his back for the rest of the match and sells it like a champ doesn't hurt things either they trade headbutts on the top rope as we come back from the second commercial break elbow drop by Ambrose they trade punches once they're back in the ring and a neck breaker by Ambrose Springboard Moonsault Reverse DDT by Styles, which we haven't seen out of him in quite a while. Obviously, TNA fans know he used to do that quite a bit in the X Division matches. We haven't seen it from him on SmackDown in a while. I don't think we've seen it out of him since he's been champion. Uh, Lunatic Lariat by Ambrose, Top Rope Superplex, Calf Crusher by Styles. Uh, Ambrose gets out of the calf crusher by basketballing Styles' skull off the mat. Styles hits a basement dropkick to Ellsworth because he thinks Ambrose is already out. Ambrose dumps Styles out of the ring. Styles eats a super kick from Ellsworth, who's like all caught up in the moment, and that costs Dean Ambrose the match. Now, fully, to all the people that are shitting on the Ellsworth shit, this was a shitty ending to a match, I'll guarantee it. The only way I'm okay with this ending, the only way this ending makes any sense is if they're gonna throw Styles and Ambrose on the SmackDown 5-on-5 five five men's team. And and once again, like I say, play up that whole, hey, these guys are bitter rivals, can they coexist on the same team type deal. I mean, on the other side of the coin, you're going to have Owens and Jericho, who at that point I'm pretty sure are going to be feuding through Rollins into the mix. You're going to have two teams that don't get along. It's going to be a gigantic version of Cesaro versus Sheamus. If they're not doing that, then fuck this ending and it didn't make any sense. But overall... The show wasn't fantastic. The show wasn't anything to write home about. It wasn't spectacular. It wasn't on fire. But compare it to last night, and this is WrestleMania. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you. They did a great kickoff towards Survivor Series. Like I say, they plugged Raw's match for Survivor Series with Lesnar and Goldberg. They've started building their teams for Survivor Series, which Raw can't do yet, because they have a pay-per-view coming this Sunday, which you wouldn't have known from watching Raw last night. So they're doing all the right things while Raw continues to do all the wrong things. Uh, we'll kick it over to NXT tomorrow night and see what they do, but I guarantee you, even if they suck, they won't suck as bad as Raw, and that's pretty much been the standard since the draft. Anyways, I've been Spaz, your YWC Reality Check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation, keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger, I'll talk to each and every last one of you later, but for right now, I'm tagging out. Bye, guys. Don't shine,